I've been getting kind of fed up with my drum sound recently. And it's not the drums or the cymbals or any gear at all necessarily. It's more about the approach that I've had for the longest time with how I tune, how I play as well, and how just in general, like the vibe I've been going for. Because for the longest time now, it's been a pretty processed mix. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of EQ, a fair bit of compression, reverb, tons of effects and stuff. But recently, like I've, I've really started to desire um, a more open sound, like a, a more minimalistic setup, just a smaller setup, less stuff on there, uh, a more more open tuning. I want to go for coated heads on my on all my drums, just more open tuning, more like more of an organic kind of sound, and not not try to fix every little thing in the mix, but let it kind of be a little bit more natural. That's an idea I've had for a while now, and I think I feel like this time around, I really want to go for that. I really want to see if I can make that happen. So this is going to be quite a journey. I want to bring you guys along for it. We'll see what happens. In general, yeah, I'm just going for a different vibe. It might work out. It might sound terrible. It might not. I, 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 I mean, either way, I'm going to learn a lot. It's going to be a fun experience. It's going to take a couple of days or so to, to of, of a lot of a lot of hours. You're just working on this until I get it right. And then the mixing process is going to take a while too. But anyway, I'm going to start doing that now. I'm going to start tearing the kit apart. And uh, yeah, I want to bring you guys along. So come along. Let's see what, what happens. I'll try to share some tips and stuff as I go. And uh, we'll just kind of see where we end up at. Let's go. I've been wondering about my rack setup this is basically what it's been for the longest time you know small adjustments over time but it's basically it's built of a um, two Gibraltar stealth racks so one is right here goes over if you have double pedals which I used to have in the past it goes over there and there's another Gibraltar stealth rack here which I've then added an extra curved bar to as well as an extra curved bar in the middle and then there's all the the stands and the clamps and everything and this is like this is 100% Gibraltar hardware uh, which is what I prefer to for hardware stance or rack doesn't really matter but yeah we'll see what it ends up being at, for for this newer setup I might actually skip this entire section completely because I am going to go with just one rack tom so if I can get that one rack tom off of here I don't really need the middle section probably we'll see what happens uh, I'll just continue with it but here's kind of what the skeleton has been for for the longest time and uh, yeah We'll see how it turns out. All right, so the first step I usually take whenever I put a kit together is I like to center the bass drum first. So in this case, I will center the bass drum on the drum rug. And uh, I'll kind of then after that put my throne, you know, get a feel for where I want my foot to be or so where I need to adjust my throne, get the hi-hat stand in and then get the snare in. And I will play for a bit with just the kick, hi-hat and snare because that's going to be the foundation of everything. And I, I mean, all the other stuff on the kit is basically going to be built around that. So I want to make sure I have the most solid foundation I can. I want to have a, a, um, a position of my throne and position of myself relative to, the, to where the bass drum is centered and you know, where it, the, everything, everything just feels great. Like the bass drum is there, the hi-hat is right there, sen snare is centered in the middle, you can kind of jam on that for a while and then we'll get to the other stuff. So first things first, let's do that. So make sure the bass drum is nice and tight on there and then we get the pedal on. This is, by the way, this is a new, a new pedal I've been playing with for a while. This is uh, an ACD Unlimited uh, Darwin pedal, longboard version. It's really, really cool. I will make a review about this pedal um, in a while. We'll see when I get around to it, but I am definitely planning to do it, so stay tuned for that. Get the little stealth rack in here. Um, snare drum, I'm gonna use my 14x7 now, and uh, we'll see which snare I end up using later, but for now I'll pick that one. This one is really, really nice. So now, I want to make sure, first of all, I mean the snare I can wait with a little bit, actually, I'll just put it like that. First thing I want to do here is put my throne in, in, a, in, a, in a position where, where my, like, imagine you're playing an air drum set, like not, you know, just, you're just playing in the air. Where would you want to put your feet and where would you want to put your hands? It's like air, just air drumming, like that's where your body naturally wants to play. So that's what you should aim for in setting up your kit. So, I mean, the bass drum already is the stationary point of the kit, so I'm going to see if I can adjust myself to sit somewhere comfortable to play it. It feels pretty good for now. I can always go back a little bit if I need to. Same thing with my left foot. Like, naturally, 
I want to be somewhere here, maybe a little bit more to the left, a little bit closer. Something like that. Feels pretty good for my feet. And then try to get the snare drum in the middle. And should feel pretty good. like a solid starting point. And again, I mean, I can always adjust it in an inch or so or where if I need to, but uh, to, for somewhere to start, this is good. So now I'm just gonna mess around a little bit with the placement of the toms, the heights, and, and kind of adjust stuff like that. Just play on it for a little while until it feels really, really good. It's wobbling a little bit now because it's too far away from the stand so I need to try to get the stand closer in towards the bass drum and kind of get the center of mass more focused because now it's like it's pretty wobbly. That did not work out. Okay this is starting to feel Pretty good. Um, floor toms are great right here, basically where I had them before. Rack tom. I kind of want to keep it right here for now. We'll see. I might move it a little bit more to the left, but having it a little bit more towards the center frees up space right here for me to get the snare mic in without being like underneath the hi-hat. So it's pretty, mic, mic position wise, this is a pretty good spot just because it allows me to do that. Might raise it up a little bit though. When the We'll kind of see when the cymbals come in. If I want to race, race, race it or not, it's all about perspective at that point. Um, we'll see what happens. So let's start bringing some hardware and some symbols in and see if we can get kind of the setup I'm looking for here. So the approach I'm taking here is I'm just kind of setting up one symbol at a time, see if I can find exactly where I want to put it. And the symbols, the symbols themselves, I might not end up using these exact ones, like for example this ride, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep on the kit for now. Uh, basically what I'll do is I'll just put some symbols up, just to kind of get them, in the, get them in the right place. And then after all of that is set up and I know how many symbols I want, I'll go to my old symbol collection over here on the wall and just kind of pick out the sounds I'm looking for this time around. So we'll get to that later as well and I'll kind of show you guys my thought process behind picking symbols. But for now, I'm just getting them set up in the right positions and the right amount of symbols I'm looking for, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so this is starting to feel pretty good. Um, let's try to get the left side crash in there. So I'm actually kind of digging just having these symbols on. It's been a long time since I had a very minimalistic setup like this. Or, I mean, I still have two floor toms and china and whatever, but I'm thinking if if I can... I, can, I, I have the 21-inch uh, Byzantz uh, polyphonic ride, the new ride Milo released this year, which is very, very versatile. If that one fits the bill here, that's a very crashable ride. This one is crashable too, but I'm thinking, because like, I always have two crashes, um, so if I'm just going to have one crash, I need a ride that's very crashable for when I end the fills on the right side. I don't want to have to always go over to that one. So I'm going to try the polyphonic ride, see if, I, see if that fits with these symbols. And uh, if, if it does, I might actually just stay with this setup. We'll see what happens. I mean, the stack is nice, but at the same time, I want to get a more organic sound. Even later, you know, when, when, when recording with the microphones and everything. So the fewer symbols and like the more... The more space I have between here and like no other symbols and stuff close to the mics, the purer of a drum sound I will be able to get without doing too much to it, you know? So let me get the polyphonic right and we'll see how that fits. All right, let's see. This symbol collection is getting a little bit out of hand, but um, let's see right here. Oh, there it is. Byzance 21 inch polyphonic. Let's give this a go. nice ride I'm not sure if it fits that's the thing I'm the thing is I haven't really decided if I want to go for a brighter cymbal sound or if I still want to have this kind of darker more characteristic kind of sound I mean I, I, I do want to use this prototype China now on my setup 
especially in this configuration with like a few select big you know symbols but I'm thinking like well, I'm trying to get the blend right essentially I'm trying to get the symbols to match so what I think I'll do is I'll keep this for a little bit I'll keep experimenting with the whole slightly brighter thing and then having the dark contrast be the china so with that in mind I'm gonna change out this crash I'm gonna select a brighter crash for this side and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that first and then I'm actually gonna mess around with the highest bit so let me first grab a little a bit of a brighter crash we have two options here I'm just gonna try them both and see what works this is a 20 inch uh, pure alloy medium crash very very like classic sounding symbol very nice it might be too classic or you know too traditional for for my for my taste with this particular setup we'll see but this is a uh, Byzance 18 inch brilliant thin crash which is a very versatile crash this is an 18 that's a 20 so it's a matter of size as well but I, I will try this one first and we'll see how that sounds First impression, these match really well. Uh, the pitch interval is great. They have a very similar, just the character, the type of sound they produce is very similar. Um, so yeah, this might be a really good fit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just play with it a little bit more and then I'm gonna try the Pirato as well. sounds great too. I prefer the 18 inch Bison Brilliant Thin Crash. Uh, this one is a little too rigid and too big for a left side crash for me. I would use this on my right side if I wanted to go for two Brilliant Crashes. But in this case, since I only want to have one and the ride act as, act as a secondary, the 18 inch Brilliant will work, will work better for me. So I'm going to go with that. Hi hats. These are great. Like these are the 16 inch Bison Extra Drive Medium Thin Hi hats. Long name. My favorite pair of Hyatt's ever. They work for they work for everything. I could easily use them with this, and they would be fine. I I'm probably gonna end, end up using them for this. There is, however, one combination I do want to try. I have a 16 inch uh, pure alloy crash that I want a pure alloy medium crash. I want to try using that as a hi hat top. Maybe that will bridge the gap between like something between dry and bright. We'll see how that works out if if that can accomplish that. So let me get the 16 inch pure alloy, and uh, we'll give it a try. Yeah, I'm really curious about this. This is not something I've tried before. I haven't had this crash for very long. So, let's give it a try. Still not sure. It's probably going to take me a while to really decide. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll I'll keep the extra dry hi hats that I had before that I always use. I'll keep those on for now, and once I get um, microphones and stuff up and running, then we'll kind of start experimenting maybe more with the hi hats if I still feel like I want to change them out. The extra dries are very very style. They work for everything. They will blend perfectly with this setup. It's just that I wanted to to um, maybe try something different this time around. We'll see what happens. Um, either way, guys, this will pretty much be it for the setup part. I am very happy with how this feels. It's a lot smaller of a setup than I had before. Very minimalistic uh, in comparison to that, and I really enjoy this. It's actually very refreshing to play on. This will not be my permanent setup. 
but it will last for a while probably. And I mean, I'm gonna change the tom heads and everything. So it's gonna be a little bit backwards because next video I will um, I will do the microphone setting up and everything. And the video after that, essentially, when I get my tom, the new tom heads, that will focus more on tuning and just like the fine details and, and like the final reveal, I guess, of, of what the drums sound like recorded. Um, but until then, thank you guys so much for, for following along on this video. I hope you enjoyed the process I've been going through here today. It's almost 7 p.m. 7 p.m. in the evening now. I got here around lunch, so it's been a pretty long day. Um, got to head back home and get some rest and get back tomorrow fresh relaxed ears and start putting up some microphones and see what happens. So uh, join me for tomorrow's video where we look into the whole microphone aspect of things to see what we can do in position wise and see if we can get a bit of a different sound. So alright guys, take care and I will see you in part two.